Hi guys! Welcome to the Ancient Monkey YouTube channel. So before we get started, make sure to hit that like button also subscribe to my channel. In this video, we will talk about Economic Consequences of the War in Ukraine So make sure to watch the full video. The Ukraine conflict is having serious consequences not only for Russia and Ukraine, but it also potentially threatens to damage the still frail economic recovery in Europe. In Ukraine, which is the main victim of the conflict, the economy may decline by up to 8% this year. In Russia, the costs of the conflict are estimated to be in the tune of 1% of GDP in 2014 to 2016, primarily on account of increased investment risks. The effects on the individual EU countries differ depending on their exposure to the Russian market. The Baltic states, Finland, and several other new EU member states are generally most affected. The impact on Austria is expected to be relatively modest. Austria is not overly exposed to the Russian market. For the EU as a whole, there are five industries where the share of Russia in total exports exceeds 3%. Textiles, pharmaceuticals, electrical equipment, machinery and transport equipment. On the assumption of a 10% loss in exports of goods and services to Russia, the estimated GDP loss would be about 0.4% for Lithuania and Estonia, and less than 0.1% for Austria. In absolute figures, Germany might lose around EUR 3 billion, followed by Italy, EUR 1.4 billion, France, Great Britain and Poland, EUR 0.8 billion each. Austria could lose close to EUR 300 million in this scenario. The estimated impact of Russia's ban on agro-food imports from the EU imposed in August 2014 is expected to be the highest in the Baltics. These losses are undoubtedly painful, yet manageable. A trade decline bigger than 10% would obviously lead to greater losses. The question is whether these losses are justifiable and will achieve the desired effects to change Russia's behavior in Ukraine and beyond. Economic consequences is of the Russia-Ukraine co-anaphylite. Stagflation ahead. The Russia-Ukraine conflict has triggered turmoil in the financial markets and drastically increased uncertainty about the recovery of the global economy. Since our last publication, the world has shifted, so have the risks. Higher commodity prices intensify the threat of long-lasting high inflation, which increases the risks of stagflation and social unrest. Certain sectors, such as automotive, transport, or chemicals, are more likely to suffer. Coface forecasts a deep recession of 7.5% for the Russian economy in 2022 and downgraded Russia's risk assessment to D, very high. European economies are most at risk. At the time of writing, Coface estimates at least 1.5 percentage point of additional inflation in 2022 while GDP growth could be lowered by one percentage point. Together with a complete cut of Russian natural gas supply, this could cost at least four points of GDP, thereby leading EU GDP growth close to zero, more probably in negative territory, in 2022. The conflict threatens to skew easy energy and commodities markets, if you are tady. Russia is the world's third oil producer, the second natural gas producer and among the top five producers of steel, nickel, and aluminum. It is also the largest wheat exporter in the world, almost 20% of global trade. On its side, Ukraine is a key producer of corn, sixth largest, wheat, seventh, sunflowers, first, and is amongst the top 10 producers for sugar beet, barley, soya, and rapeseed. On the day the invasion began, financial markets around the world fell sharply and the prices of oil, natural gas, metals, and food commodities surged, following the latest developments. Brent oil prices breached USD 100 per barrel for the first time since 2014, $125 slash at the time of writing, while Europe's TTF gas prices surged at a record EUR 192 on 4 March while high commodity prices were one of the risks already identified as potentially disruptive to the recovery, the escalation of the conflict increases the likelihood that commodity prices will remain higher for much longer. In turn, it intensifies the threat of long-lasting high inflation, thereby increasing the risks of stagflation and social unrest in both advanced and emerging countries. 
automotive, transport, chemicals are the most VLNEERABLECTTRs. The crisis is obviously strongly impacting an already strained automotive sector due to various shortages and high commodity and raw material prices. Metals, semiconductors, cobalt, lithium, magnesium. Ukrainian automotive factories supply major car makers in Western Europe. Some announced the stoppage of factories in Europe, while other plants around the world are already planning outages due to chip shortages. Airlines and maritime freight companies will also suffer from higher fuel prices, airlines being the most at risk. First, fuel is estimated to account for about a third of their total costs. Second, European countries, the US and Canada, have forbidden the access to their territories to Russian airlines and in turn, Russia has banned European and Canadian aircrafts from its airspace. This means higher costs since airlines will have to take longer routes. Eventually, airlines have little room for rising costs, as they continue to face lower revenues due to the impact of the pandemic. Rail freight will also be impacted. European companies are forbidden to do business with Russian railways, which will likely disrupt freight activity between Asia and Europe, transiting though Russia. We also expect feedstock for petrochemicals to be more expensive, and the soaring prices of natural gas to impact the fertilizer markets, hence the whole agri-food industry. Deep Re-CESIN ahead for the Russian economy The Russian economy will be in great difficulty in 2022, falling into deep recession. Coface's updated GDP forecast for 2022 stands at 7.5% after the recovery experienced last year. This has led us to downgrade the country's risk assessment from B, fairly high, to D, very high. Sanctions notably targets major Russian banks, the Russian central banks, the Russian sovereign debt, selected Russian public officials and oligarchs, and the export control of high-tech components to Russia. These measures put considerable downward pressure on the Russian ruble, which has already plummeted and will drive a surge in consumer price inflation. Russia has built up relatively strong financials, a low level of public external debt, a recurrent current account surplus, as well as substantial foreign reserves app, USD 640 ben. However, the freeze imposed by Western depository countries on the latter prevents the Russian central bank from deploying them and reduces the effectiveness of the Russian response. The Russian economy could benefit from higher prices for commodities, especially for its energy exports. However, EU countries announced their intention to limit their imports from Russia. In the industrial sector, restricted access to Western-produced semiconductors, computers, telecommunications, automation, and information security equipment will be harmful, given the importance of these inputs in the Russian mining and manufacturing sectors. European economies are DAE most at risk. Because of its dependence on Russian oil and natural gas, Europe appears to be the region most exposed to the consequences of this conflict. Replacing all Russian natural gas supply to Europe is impossible in the short to medium run and current price levels will have a significant effect on inflation. At the time of writing, with the barrel of Brent trading above $125 and natural gas futures suggesting prices durably above €150 slash mall, Coface estimates at least 1.5 percentage point of additional inflation in 2022, which would erode household consumption, and together with the expected fall in business investment and exports, lower GDP growth by approximately one percentage point. While Germany, Italy or some countries in the Central and Eastern European region are more dependent on Russian natural gas, the trade interdependence of Eurozone countries suggests a general slowdown. On top of that, we estimate that a complete cut of Russian natural gas flows to Europe would raise the cost to 4 percentage points in 2022, which would be bring annual GDP growth close to zero, more probably in negative territory, depending on demand destruction management. No region will be set priority by imported and inflation and global trade distributions. In the rest of the world, the economic consequences will be felt mainly through the rise in commodity prices, which will fuel already existing inflationary pressures. As always when commodity prices soar, net importers of energy and food products will be particularly affected, 
with the specter of major supply disruptions in the event of an even greater escalation of the conflict. The drop in demand from Europe will also hamper global trade. In Asia-Pacific, the impact will be felt almost immediately through higher import prices, particularly in energy prices, with many economies in the region being net energy importers, led by China, Japan, India, South Korea, Taiwan, and Thailand. As North American trade and financial links with Russia and Ukraine are fairly limited, the impact of the conflict will mainly be felt through the price channel and through the slowdown of the European growth. Despite the prospect of slower economic growth and higher inflation, the recent geopolitical events are not expected to derail monetary policy in North America at this stage. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe to our channel before you go. Thank you for watching.